Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Make it me to lie down in green pastures. Leading me beside the still waters. And restore my soul. Leading me in the path of righteousness for the man's sake. Even though I walk through the valley, the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. I have the table for me in the presence of my enemies. I've anointed my head with oil, my cup running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation that seek them, that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts is the King of glory. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies, and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me in this, Will I be confident? One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I see after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. In the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. The secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies around about me. 
Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou sayest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy ways, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over to the will of mine enemies for false witnesses are risen up against me and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. If you would like to view, you would come at this time for when the casket is closed, it will not be opened again. You would like the view if you would come at this time. Oh 
chapter number 4, starting at verse number 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus did, Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Yes. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. To all of the members of the Turner family, our heart, condolences, and sympathies go out to each and every one of you, especially his wife, his sons, his daughters, siblings. Uh, the Bible teaches us that we should always seek God in prayer. Yeah. And there's an old saying that says that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot bear. And so today we'll take our sorrows and our heartbreak to God. Because when we pray, it is, it is an invitation for God to act on our behalf. And I pray today for this family that God will strengthen you, give you comfort, and that he will bless you. And that from this service, you will find a measure of encouragement and a measure of comfort. So I want us to take a moment and let's ask God to strengthen this family, not only today, but for the days going forward. And whether you choose to pray silently or Verbalize your prayer, that's perfectly fine. But I want us to take a moment and lift them up to heaven in the name of Jesus. Dear Lord, today we're thankful for the amazing grace of God. We're not going to pretend that we understand all your ways, but we have come to a place in our lives for the most of us just to trust the heart of God. In moments, Lord, when our heart is broken, in moments when darkness tries to cover us, we know that you are a good God and a gracious God. And Lord, today we lift up the Turner family. Every member of this family, we bring them to the throne of grace. We ask that the power of Jesus Christ will rest upon them in the way of comfort, the way of strength, and the way of blessing. There's nothing that you cannot take them through, Lord. And we're asking in the wonderful and matchless name of Jesus Christ that the blessing of the Most High God will be upon this family. Yeah. Bless this service today, Lord. Let there be a, just a free course of your grace that would do its work in the house of God today. Let every heart be ministered to. Let every soul feel the touch of the Almighty's presence. Yeah. And for these things, we are thankful, we are grateful, and we give you the credit and the praise. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody say amen. amen. God bless you, family. Thank you. 
Sister Gigi, your, your children, uh, we definitely uh, share in your loss um, and never can be where you are, but we share in your loss. But when I, when I think about Apostle Turner, I think about uh, someone of faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I can say him as a brother, but he came into my life during the genesis of my believing. Yeah. When I just started. Uh, thinking about believing in Christ or coming to the beginning of believing in Christ and, and he was operating there in Life Tabernacle with some faith that I couldn't understand because uh, I was you know I wasn't willing to give what he was giving I wasn't willing to share what he was sharing so he was my motivator he was my encourager he, he always gave more than us because he had more than us but uh I can just remember him doing some things. One, uh, one story I want to tell, and I'll be done, is when you all were about to move to uh, Georgia, and uh, the house was up for sale. <laughs> and uh, the house wouldn't sell because the plumbing wouldn't work. And uh, and if it and they they was packed and ready to go that evening. But if the plumbing didn't work, the, the house wasn't going to close that evening. And I'm like, he said, we leave. <laughs> 
we're leaving today. It's gonna sail. It's gonna sail. We run them. We ran that road through there. We ran it through there. And it, man, it never. It wouldn't. It wouldn't. It wouldn't open up. Uh, and I remember. I don't know if uh, Holmes. I think Holmes was there. And of course, that was you, you all's uh, fault because y'all put those plastic toys through the drain at the top. So they served as a cork. You put water in there and they rise up, but then when, they, when the water go down, they stop it back up again. So we went in the closet and we cut that, we cut that pipe, and here comes the, the bowling pins and the plastic balls, because uh, children that were so young was already climbing on top of houses and put, putting things in. But he knew that it was going to go. I, I just, man, we was like, you need to call him and tell him. Uh, you're not going to get this, this this opened up. But that's the kind of faith he operated in. Yeah. When he said he was going to do something, he did it. Yeah. He did it. Amen. We praise God for that. I'm reminded of one scripture when Jesus was evangelizing the world. and Of course, they were trying to trick him and all of that. Uh, Matthew and uh, Matthew 12. And uh, his disciples or those that came and they asked him, well, your mother and your brother is outside. And uh, he answered them. In fact, he pointed toward them. He held his hands up. And he says, my mother, my brother, and my sister are those who do, do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And I believe that that's why we are, he has so many spiritual brothers, so many spiritual sons, is because he accepted us based on us uh, trying to do the will of the Father. We just want to let you know we're going to be praying for y'all. Uh, wonderful man. Our heart goes out to you all and your family. Thank y'all. Let's celebrate in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. It's kind of a bittersweet situation right now. Because I can't admit first to the family, certainly off our condolences. Uh, we learned that love is what love does. Love is an action word. In fact, Jesus said, how shall men know that you're my disciples? Is that you have love one to another. You know, we quote that love one for another. But if I had to tell you I had a million dollars for you, but I never get it to you, it's not going to do you any good. But if I get it to you, if I can get my love to you, then that makes all the difference in the world. And we know Apostle Turner was a man that knew how to get love to me. There was nobody that was a stranger to him. He just started talking to anybody. He talked to the lame, the crazy, the lazy, the dead, and they all respond. <laughs> and sometimes I look at him, he was riding some people that was mentally challenging. I say, you really ride with them behind you? But he knew how to talk their language too. He became all things. Are there any witnesses in the building? He became all things to all men that he might win. And whether he wanted them to God, he sure wanted them to Apostle Turner. Because nobody, I, I'm looking around, there's a bunch of people here, and we're not here because we're trying to come and make sure he did. You know, some folks they go, so we just want to make sure he go. But I am here, over the years I've shared life with him, and so many different things. He took me to take my driver's test. You know, they used to let you go in there and take it several times and day. I failed it twice. <laughs> and we got back in that van. You know the van you had with that long front? <laughs> and he said to me, he said, Doc, you need to go pray. <laughs> so you need to go pray and ask God to help you drive this car. <laughs> the next morning I prayed and I got a driver's license. <laughs> And everything he'll tell you, you need, to pray, you need to pray. Have you prayed? And that's what, that's what make a person a legend. Not a cheap knockoff. So I am jealous of him. I've been jealous of him since Jesus several times. 
with a godly jealousy. I'm jealous now that he left me here. Yeah. 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 Grief and hurt. But if he had the opportunity to come back here, like I, I holler at y'all. See you on the other side. I am sharper time. If I would leave you with one thing, be encouraged. The scripture says, while we look not at the things which are seen. Yeah. For the things which are seen, they're eternal. Yeah. For the things that are not seen, they are eternal. Yeah. Yes, we hurt. But I would encourage you, in your hurt, still be human. I tell people all the time, now I'm having to live it. Have to be human. Cry and still believe God made the right decision. The other day I was frustrated. I was upset. I was mad at some people. And me with my ball head said, What did I do? I picked up the phone and went to Fred Turner's office. realized I can't call him this time. So I would say to everybody in this room, when you can't call him, know that he left us with a God that can take care of everything. So I had to ride in that big truck crying. Folk looking at me say, he in that big truck crying, I didn't care because at that moment, I couldn't call Fred Turner, so I had to, I couldn't be pretty. I just had to say, Lord, I need you to help me. When I cried out to God, God showed up. I still need him to help me with this, but he will. He will. I want to encourage you. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his name. Put on the whole arm of God. God's got our back. He's got our back. God bless you. God bless you. We're going to ask him man, for Pastor Donnie Simpson to come and do my resolutions and acknowledgement. Then we're going to have a song by Sister Felicia Ledette. And immediately after Sister Ledette, we're going to have expression for two minutes, please. And immediately after the expressions of those who want to express themselves, we're going to also allow every minister who wants to express themselves for two minutes as well. Pass it on. Apostle Turner's life affected so many people and so many fellowships around the city of Houston and Falls, Georgia, where he pastored at. And uh, two of the churches that were deeply impacted by his ministry have submitted resolutions today to show and express their sympathies and condolences to the family. And I'd like to take the time to read just the two of them. There's probably more resolutions that are here representing what Apostle Turner meant to that church and to the lives of those individuals. Just make sure that the family gets those and they keep them as a memorial, as someone whose life was blessed and blessed so many others. The first one I'd like to read is from Solid Rock Community Church. Before we can ask the question, why death? We must first ask the question, why birth? What may be difficult to understand now, we will understand when we are face to face with our Lord and Maker. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us strive, therefore, to enter into that rest, Hebrews the fourth chapter, verses 10 and 11. Whereas God has seen fit to call Fred Turner into his eternal rest, his labor here is over. He is at rest. We love him, but God loved him more. God has prepared a place for Brother Fred to rest, just as he will for each of us. So cry if you must, but not as one who has no hope. For earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. The Bible teaches us in Philippians, the fourth chapter, that whatsoever is pure, whatsoever honorable, whatsoever is right, 
any excellence, and anything that is worthy of praise, think on these things. So when you're feeling sad because he's no longer here with you, think on the good he did, the truth he exemplified, and the love he shared. When you think life is over, you're sure to find joy in all of living. To his wife, children, grandchildren, siblings, family members, and friends, we, the Solid Rock Community Church family, mourn with you in your sorrow and loss. We pray that the God of comfort, the ever-loving Father, the Creator, to the ends of the earth, will be with you and console you. We pray also that he'll carry you through these trying times. Remember, his loving memories will linger with you forever. Prayerfully submitted by the Solid Rock Community Church, where Reverend Allen James, Jr., is the pastor. There's also one that was submitted by the New Hope Baptist Church, and I'll take a moment to read this one. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath forgot the godless again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you, we are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last day. We, the members of New Hope Baptist Church, offer our deepest sympathy and condolences on our loss in heaven's gain. We know precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And our dear brother may be absent from the body, but he is in the presence of the Lord. We know God is love. And he has put special people in our lives who truly love us, and we them. Fred was a childhood friend, and as an adult, a fellow yokeman in the ministry. His free will, however, a God's free will, is the one in control of a line in our paths to cross. I thank God for my early friendship and relationship with Fred and his family, and that our paths crossed for so many years. We know and believe no matter how much we love, God loves more. Furthermore, we know that when his earthly tabernacle is dissolved, Jesus has prepared a place not made by human hands that is eternal. In times like these, we must trust in the promises of God. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Paul writes, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Christ that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We believe there is no sorrow heaven cannot heal, and we believe to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. This is our blessed assurance, our blessed hope, that we who believe on Jesus Christ shall rise with him on that great day. Our dear brother Fred Turner has gone ahead of us, but we look forward to that great getting up morning where we will be together with him, the Christ. Please know that we will continue to lift this family in prayer. We are honored to present this resolution and place a copy in our church records this 8th day of August, 2018. May God continue to keep you and bless you. Sincerely submitted by Pastor George T. Simon, Jr. God bless you, and these will be given to the family. Uh, 
I met Apostle Turner when he came to our church, and um, I am a Turner, which is my uh, main name. And uh, I told him, I said, my dad didn't know a lot of his people, but I'm trying to find some of his people. So I jokingly, I said, I said, hey, if y'all have family reunions, I'm gonna come bombard y'all family reunion. He said, well, just come on, come on, just let me know. Just let me know when. Everything, so that's the, the little relationship that we had and everything. So I just want to comfort the family and let you all know that hey, put your trust in God, He's gonna make it all right. And he has to do it. 
But you know what he told me one day? I was having problems with my relationship and stuff. He told me, he said, man, everybody talking about, I love you, I love you, I love you. He said, but you gotta like a person. You gotta like them before you can love them. He said, a lot of people, that's all they talking about, I love you from the heart. Your heart is from God give you a heart for blood, to pump the blood back to love. Love is all about like. Like, if you don't like a person, how can you love them? You say life is about like, not love. Love comes about people. God give us love to enjoy us and have fun with each other. You say, if you ain't got joy, in your life, yeah. how can you love a person? Yeah. 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 I'm not a Christian person, but I just talk to my brother. You know? We talk off and on, but he always put the right things in my mind. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He was telling me, Shade, <laughs> you got to slow down, boy. I told him, slow down for what? <laughs> He said, slow down for love. <laughs> he said, but if you don't like a person, how you gonna love her? John Frog, sure right. <laughs> Boy, the frog was something else. That's my brother. I love him. But you know, man, I look around, and all you beautiful people, man, all you my family, man, guess what? I love you all. But I like you. I want to love you. I like you. You gotta like a person to love them. You know, a lot of people be talking about, man, why we can't have our relationship? Why can't why things they acting right? It's because you ain't liking right. <laughs> you got to like right to make love right. Oh. <laughs> and they all about the me. All about life. I love you. Hey, you know what he told me? He said, uh, one more thing. I don't know if y'all know this song, but he said, Jesus is on the right line. Right. Jesus is on the right line. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want.
Bishop Rose, Sister Gigi, family. Uh, I'm going to keep it two minutes. I'm going to try hard. Uh, Fred Turner was my cousin. He was my brother. He was my personal pastor. Everybody don't have a personal pastor. He was my personal pastor. My counselor, my spiritual guidance, uh, counsel my children. Most recently, one of my sons. I ain't gonna call him out today. About six weeks ago, though, me and him was kind of locking arms, and Fred called my house. He said, where is he at, bro? I said, he here. He said, put him on the phone. And I gave him the phone. I went back outside. He come back. My phone was almost dead. But, and I said, Fred said, bye. I'll call you later. And I looked at my son, and it was a piece of body. After Fred got through talking to him. And that's the kind of person he was. I was blessed to actually hear his first sermon. He had, he had went to, to Liberty to, to be with his uncle Jack and Aunt Jane. And when he came back, he had church in the garage. Uh, was Terrell Jean still here? Terrell was there. Me and Paul. Robbie was there, but he got up and left. <laughs> no, nah, I'm kidding, but uh, he gave his first sermon. Moses went in the mouth. Moses went in the mountain, and two weeks ago yesterday, he gave me my last sermon. I would hear from him. Well, one third or two, and for 45 minutes, and it was basically he was basically just was stay planted where God put you. And, and don't 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 look at these big buildings, bro. That's, they're not churches, they're just buildings. The people, we the church. So they're just sanctuaries. Where's your sanctuary, bro? I said, well, I want to give them the physical address of my church. He said, that ain't your sanctuary. I, I pray it's not. Because I'm, I'm praying that you pray and worship at 5911. That's where your sanctuary is. And I said, you know, you're right, cuz. And I really start giving God more honor and praise, because when I walk in that house, it's a peace in that house. And I ain't going to let nobody come in that house and steal my peace and my joy. And Fred, uh, man, I love you so much. You, you've been, I'm, I'm like the pastor said a while ago, I've, I've gone to pick up my phone later in the call. And I, I, got to, I got to take that out number out of my phone because I, I can't call him. But I can call on the Lord. Yeah. And he taught me. Yeah. Fred Turner yeah. taught me how to talk to the Lord. Yeah. I don't always get it right. But you got to know his words. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't know his words, you ain't going to never hear his voice. Right. Right. Never. And excuse my Bible, it's kind of beat up, but I use it a lot. I use, you're going to find a lot of highlights in here. And a little boy gave me this Bible at the Creole shack. He was fresh out of prison. And he gave it to me. And I've been using it ever since. Fred, thank you so much, my brother. I'm going to miss you. I love you. And for one Fred turn. And, and, and let me say this real quick. His nickname was Frog. But for those that don't really know, it was Frog Eyes. Because when he would preach, his eyes got big. And that's why we started calling him Frog Eyes. But he loved the Lord. He loved the Lord. And back in the day when he came back, he wasn't playing church. That was his first sermon in the garage. Love you much, cuz. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Jock. I'm his first son. 
me and my dad, we, um, I would never tell us to his face, but he was so damn cool. Amen. All right, that man had like a Denzel walk to him. All right, this will always be in my head when he was telling the sermon, and he was naming the friends of David, Daniel, I'm not that good with that, but he was like Shadrach, Meshach, in a bad Negro. <laughs> can't say that in church. <laughs> but he did. And everyone got away with it. I was like, okay, well, I guess if you're that cool, you can. <laughs> I mean, but it's, uh, when he died, he was the first one on the call because he, he had that thing about him. Like, we didn't talk much, but he knew when I, I needed to talk to him. And he would give me things that I, I didn't know I needed. And he would do it in such a short, sweet way because he knew I didn't like talking on the phone. So I'm just gonna keep it short, simple, like we have the phone. Cause I know right now he's waiting, playing dominoes with Vera and Jackie right Amen. now. But uh, dad, doing good. My mom's doing good. My niece and nephew, they're doing good. My grandparents are doing good. And I love you, man. It's all I got to do. Short time. And I truly know that I know him better than some of you who've been knowing him for a lifetime. You see, this is the spirit that he had about him. He didn't carry that title because I didn't know he was an apostle. When I first met him in Augusta, Georgia, he said, Hey, John Banks, my name is Fred. That's how I knew him. And so, you know, he doesn't make any mistake because... In 1957, on the 18th of March, before that day, he knew this day was coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, because he knows everything. He knows and I know people say, uh, boy, I just can't wait till I get there. I can. I'm not ready right now, but I'm prepared. You know what I'm saying? I prepare every day to go there. But I show sure hope. He keep me here for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Gigi, I was surprised when I got the call. I really were. But I know that he loved him so much, just like you said, he called him up so he can entertain some of those with some new jokes. Because they probably was getting bored. But they knew if they called Fred, he would pick everybody up. And I'm going to cut it now because some of the people here, I know y'all don't want to talk for two hours, but keep it less than two minutes. So I'm going to give you some of my time back. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you for some of your time. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm glad that I was able to make it today, because I, you know, but I'm thankful for uh, Facebook, because uh, Brother Jimmy uh, yeah. sent that to me about Fred. I was really shocked, hurt, sad. Hello. And, uh, you know, like, uh, Fred and I, we go back a long way. You know, I heard someone talk about Genesis, but our Genesis is simply this. We got baptized in Jesus' name in 1978 yeah. in the city of Houston. Yeah. So it was like, it was a shock for us, you know, we just being regular folks, uh, that the power of God was so strong that it brought us to uh, repentance. Uh, something was better in this life than your normal life. Yeah. And so subsequent to that, I see that Fred has gone on as well as myself. And uh, I am really thanking God for our predecessors in the faith. And myself having experienced death in the family, you know, both parents and wife, I want the family to know that you can make it. And when you think you can't make it, God will carry you through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say amen, everybody. Amen. Everyone that wants to have expressions, if you would just come over here and line up so we can see who you are, so we won't have to... Wait. Go ahead. First, giving honor to God, the house of God, the men of the clergy. I just want to say about Fred and take a moment because I've heard a lot of people say about the impact that he's made. I want to talk about his obedience to God. Fred was obedient to God. I remember I was eight months pregnant, at home alone, sick. The room was spinning. And nobody would answer the call. And Fred just happened to call. And I told him, I'm sick. They want me to go to the hospital. But I don't have a way there. 
He said, I'm on my way. Now, at eight months pregnant, Fred had his head on my forehead, <laughs> and he was pregnant. But at eight months pregnant, you have to realize I didn't want his hand <laughs> on my forehead. <laughs> but he was taken to the hospital. <laughs> so we went. Real quickly, I'll wrap this up. Two days later, I was on an operation table. It was an emergency C-section. They had lost my heart rate and my daughter's heart rate. And this morning, when I was on my way here, I looked at my daughter and I looked at my grandson. And I said to myself, if it had not been for the goodness of God and the obedience of Fred to her, we wouldn't be here today. So I thank Fred. I thank you. Gigi, I thank you for loving him like you did, giving him the joy that you gave him, and the whole Turner family who loved me even before my mother Mary brought me. <laughs> Y'all embraced me, and I thank you. <laughs> and he, my daddy. Hello everyone. My name is Vivian Henry Lee. Fred and I were what we could call backyard buddies. He was a year behind me and he was our rescuer. If we lost a ball on the roof, if we lost a kite to a tree, y'all called him frog, we called him squirrel. <laughs> he was not afraid to climb anything. That little chain link fence that separated our backyards, he could scale it without thought. The wooden fence that belonged to the Mosleys, when things went into their yard, he was up and over in a flash. The kites in the trees, where he loved to stay, and if you really wanted to find Fred, you knew to look up in the trees, because that's where he spent his days, hanging out in the trees, eating apples. <laughs> We had a Tom and Huck kind of thing, and he got me once. We would hang each other's clothes out to dry. His mom washed, I'd hang his, he would give me a nickel. <laughs> I, my mom would wash, he'd hang mine, I would give him a nickel. It kind of went back and forth until one day he was two cents shy. You still owe me two cents. <laughs> But when we reconnected through this new social media, I learned about the woman he loved with all his heart. And I told him, I said, Fred, you remember my grandma used to say, you find that person, she fits like a glove. That's your person. And that's the first thing he told me. I found my glove, Viv. And I love her with all my heart. I said, well, great, because that's all we ever wanted to do was find that one person that fit like a glove. And I'm sorry that I have to meet you this way. But trust me, I've known you from the moment we found each other on that Facebook thing. <laughs> and he has told me all the wonderful things that you all have been doing. And I'm going to miss him, even though, like I said, we've been years and we've been apart. I'm going to miss my backyard buddy. And the best man at hide and seek, too. <laughs> I'm Fred. Uh, uncle, I married his, uh, his mother's youngest uh, sister. And Fred was the person that could keep you laughing all the time. But it's just a couple things that uh, uh, stick in my mind that Fred uh, said or did. One of them was right ahead of Doberman one time. And the dog was tied up in the garage and uh, Fred went in the garage and uh, Rodney told him, he said, Fred, don't mess with that dog, that dog will bite. And so Fred kept looking at the dog, looking at the dog, and uh, Rodney said, don't mess with the dog, he'll bite. So Fred got the dog, he said, bite me, bite me. <laughs> and the dog bit him. <laughs> 
<laughs> Later on, I asked Fred, I said, well, that Doberman bite? He said, well, he bite. He bit me. <laughs> and uh, another thing is uh, that sticks in my mind that Fred told me Monday a week ago. Uh, I don't know why, but Judy and Fred was at the house, and uh, we were talking and going on, and he said, uh, you know, he said, uh, when, when we was younger back in Pleasantville, uh, when they had the little gang each other riding there and rolling in the Eric and all of them, and uh, he said, one day, uh, Eric told him, he said, uh, I want you to jump on this boy and beat his butt. So I said, did you whip me, Fred? He said, no, he whipped me. <laughs> And uh, he said, so then uh, uh, Eric told him, he said, well, look here, uh, Frog, I know you can whip super. This was, this was this other guy's uh, brother. So uh, I said, well, did you whip, whip super? He said, oh, no, I didn't whip super. He said, I realized later on that's why they called him super, because he was super. <laughs> Pastor Holmes, Bishop Rose, and all the ministers. I just thank God for this time and just thank God for knowing Apostle Turner. I had the privilege of knowing Apostle Turner, First Lady Gigi, for about 20 years. And uh, I just thank God. Apostle Turner, he always has unique things to say to you. This meant so much. And we had a, a conference at our church, and, and it was after church. And sometimes, you know, you can get blessed after church. So uh, he came to me, he said, he said, I love you. He said, I don't love you for what you do, but I love you for who you are. And sometimes we can think we can work ourselves into heaven, but it's not about that. But I thank God for what a pastor did for, for me and my family and what he still in my family. My daughter, privilege of knowing Nina, when my daughter was in, in Atlanta for four years, her and Nina were friends and they were able to communicate from my daughter being from Houston, going to Atlanta, going to school, and I just thank God for what the Apostle Turner did for me, and I just want to tell y'all to go high and high in Jesus' name, and I want to personally thank First Lady Gigi. She's a special lady. The first time I ever spoke in tongues, she's right there walking me through what I need to go to the next level of God, and I just want to let everybody know that Apostle Turner was truly a blessing to me and my family and my church family. Amen. Hello everyone, my name is Marion. Uh, I had the chance of going to Apostle Turner's church. He was a great man of God. He really knew the word. He studied the word and he gave it to his people. Uh, he, he did not leave us ignorant. He, would, like, he really taught us the word. And I believe that he, he fulfilled God's plan that he had for his life and he touched the many hearts of everybody in this room. Uh, he left a footprint on everybody's heart, and I see that. And he, I, I, I thank God about a, a week before he died, he, God placed him on my heart to call him. And when I called him, he said, I was just thinking about you, and I was thinking about him too. And it wasn't by chance that I called him to, just to hear his voice one last time. And I thank God for that, and I thank you, Turner family, for sharing it with me. Thank y'all for everything. This, this, this is the oldest family in our life. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Frederick's uh, auntie. I was his mother's oldest sister. And I just want to say he's always in town and he'll be with my daughter, Judy. She'll pick him up with her. But they were, they were in the car going to get breakfast, I think, and they called me and she said, I could hear Fred in there. So he spoke to me and he said, you know I'm going to get by there and see you. I said, yeah, you know you always get by, but I want to tell him I didn't, he didn't get by. But I forgive him. <laughs> <laughs> I was glad that he was in the time with me. I love him and love all of you. Thank you. Well, I don't know where to start. Pastor Rose, thank you for covering him to the point where he is today, Sister G. I know he loves you. I heard him tell you his last goodbyes. I love you. How was that placed on me? Why was I so fortunate? Why was I so honored to have those last minutes to hear him say, I love you? To see him give you his last kiss goodbye. I witnessed it. I was there. And I know in his heart 
There were so many more things he wanted to say. I felt it when we were at James and JoJo's. We were not going to leave without eating some of that gumbo that JoJo had <laughs> threw down in front of us. But I saw him as James was talking to him. I saw this look. I saw this, I don't know what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling. But he went into himself for a minute while James was holding a conversation with him. And I just stared at him from the stove because I was getting my gumbo. <laughs> but I saw that look like, man, I'm going I'm to leave y'all. I'm going on a journey. And I don't know how to tell nobody. But I love y'all, and I can say it in so many languages and so many words, but I, I have to go. <clears throat> and we took another tour. We visited Rodney and Paul, Matthew, ate that chicken after we ate the gumbo. <laughs> But I'm just saying, that he, he knew that this was his last trip home. Yeah. Brother Gerald, Brother Jimmy, Brother Floyd, Ezekiel, Pastor Rose. He knew he was coming to see y'all for the last time. And I'm glad that he was here with all of us. Even though he had to sit with the Gigi, but he, he loved you. <laughs> I want to be just so kind. I know that I'm not. People want to have something to say. I'm going to let this young lady, she come all the way from the back. I'm going to let her read the last one. They like to speak so we can move on. Thank you. Hello. Uh, hello, family. I just wanted to say something. Uh, I knew Fred from very young in my life, so he was an impact, and I I love the man that he became. Uh, I love the man that he was before, but I loved to watch him grow. And the thing about his growth, it didn't change him. He was still the same person. He still had those words. I mean, who who can be so prolific, right? No. And, um, wow, I just wanted to say something. God bless everybody. Um, God bless you. God bless you. Let's give the Lord a hand clap for all of our discussions on today. We're going to read the obituary silently at this time. young men that was with Bishop and that was a quiet young brother 
and his smile was just so bright when he was smiling, just a very bright day. And I remember when he started pastoring in Augusta, started pastoring in Georgia, I invited him to come to a little small country in Louisiana, Jonesboro, Louisiana, to come and preach for me. And the thing that I like about Apostle Fred was that he didn't look down on anyone. He didn't wait till you got real large to say, yeah, I'll come and have your meeting. You're running two, three hundred people at that time. Had a little storefront church. And, and I never forget the time when him and Sister Gigi came to Jonesboro, Louisiana. And I wanted to hear the story how he got hooked up with Bishop Rose and Bishop, um, I can tell it now, he really didn't come to your church to join your church. He really came to your church to get a paycheck. But you put a stipulation on him, he couldn't get the paycheck until you come and hear you preach. And he said, he sat there, he listened to Bishop preach, and his whole mind was that, wish he heard and finish, I can sell this and move on. But during that message, God touched his heart. And the next thing you know, the rest is history. He not only sold Bishop Rose, I think it was a, a long something. A long system. See, that's just a note. Amen. So your long system and God did something great with that brother's life. And from that point on, he touched so many of our lives. Just touched us. And we just thank God for this great man of God whom we're going to miss so dearly. I'm going to open it up right now for all of the ministers. If you want to have something to say for all of the ministers, if you just take two minutes. And immediately after our ministers do our expressions, we're going to amen. Allow the man of God who shepherded him for several, several years. We're going to allow him to come, amen, and give us words of wisdom. That's Bishop Richard Rose. And we thank God, amen. Men of God, we will now open it for you all to have expressions. Praise the Lord, everyone. There's so many words to say about my friend. You know you got to show yourself as a friend to be called a friend. And go far to say that I've been through a lot of things. Got introduced to a lot of people. Come from a crazy walk of life. And I can go far to say a true real brother right here. Right. Genuine. Yeah. A man of integrity. Yeah. A man of character. Yeah. And yes, he did come to sell us a long system. <laughs> yes, he did. And little as he know, he got a loan. Yeah. And by that great loan that he got, he has touched the lives of many people. Yeah. 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 For one me, because I remember when he first came, Remember when he first got born again? Whole nine yards of it. Met his whole family. Met you, as you know, when you was in prison. Yes. Uh, Fred, Fred was just a very, very genuine of a friend. So I just want to let you all know, Sister Gigi, kids, y'all keep carrying on. Y'all keep doing what he instilled within you all. And y'all know that he wants y'all to live for God. Yeah. Go God's way. So y'all have to be there for mom. Yeah. Mom, I know you have to be there for them children. God has you all. Yeah. We have y'all in prayer. Yeah. I'm constantly being encouraged. Just want to let you know, Sister G, kids, y'all, we love y'all very, very much. Amen. God bless you. sure if Brother Fred had a best friend. But I think so many people can say that they had a best friend in Brother Fred. But when I say impactful, there was a time in my life shortly after Bible college that I wasn't ready to go home. Things weren't where I wanted them to be. I took a job working for somebody that you probably would not work for. For six months, 
without a paycheck. Yes, I did lose my apartment. <laughs> but Brother Fred picked me up every single morning, had Zig Ziglar playing, and I was getting a sales education. It was more than just a ride to work every morning. My life was being impacted, and he did it on purpose. This is what he did with people, and I know I'm not the only person. He did this kind of thing, because if you ever, the van, everybody knows the van, right? <laughs> if you ever got in that van early in the morning, you were with him in that van at every stop along the way until night. But you know, the, the, the fascinating thing about that is that he was taking people money many times or some kind of help. Truly, you know, we say this about many people and many times at a time like this, but I think it's so true about him. I've never met anybody like him. Right. I, I really have not. Uh, that was just such a instrumental time in my life and it launched me in many different ways and I'm so thankful, I'm so thankful to his family because you produced this guy. I mean, at the pulpit, we, I cringed sometimes, I'll be honest with you, because I'd never met anybody like that, but he would break the ice in ways that nobody else could. Make you feel comfortable and make you feel like, whoa, what did he just say? At the same time. But I love Brother Fred very, very much. And I, I look forward to hearing the stories that he was telling about me. Sister Gigi told me the other day. I was the source of many sermons, or at least an example or two in some of them. So I'd like to hear those. But, you know, it's just a great thing to have your life touched by somebody. And I know it was nobody but God. Because, you know, at times in your life you need somebody. You know, Barnabas did this to the great apostle Paul. When Paul was untouchable, nobody wanted to be around him, nobody wanted to get near him because he had a reputation for killing Christians. Barnabas said, I'm going to take the chance. That's the kind of guy Brother Fred, Apostle Turner, was. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise up in here. Hallelujah. See, Apostle Turner was a praiser. Hallelujah. He wouldn't want you to sit up in here. Hallelujah. Because Mr. said we're not having a funeral of glory to God. Hallelujah. He will truly worship the Lord in this place. So you ought to act like you want to worship God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he's been a friend. Hallelujah. When I had nobody else to talk to, I could call him. Hallelujah. When I needed guidance, glory be to God, he was a counselor, glory be to God. When I needed prayer, he was a priest. Hallelujah. He would go in for me. Sometimes, you know, we can be ministers of the gospel, but sometimes it's hard to pray. Hallelujah. When things begin to touch your life, glory be to God. He was all that. But I remember in 2008, glory be to God, he, I took him my daughter. Although I was in ministry, I gave him my daughter. I took my daughter to him and I said, Apostle God led me here and told me to give you my daughter. This is no longer my daughter, but she's yours. It's not that I actually gave her up, but I gave her up spiritually. Hallelujah. Because God was doing something great in her life of me being mother. Sometimes they don't want to listen to the parents. They'll follow someone else better. Amen. So I gave her. He looked at me and said, are you sure? And it seemed strange. And I said, no, she's yours. And when I gave her up, I can say that God allowed him to water that seed. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. She became a full minister of the gospel. Glory be to God. She seen. She was one of them that's standing up here with her. Hallelujah. Woman of God, hallelujah. Apostle Turner was a great man, yeah. hallelujah. Yeah. And I give God the glory for that, but he always kept saying, You're going to Texas. He was going to get her to Texas. Uh -huh. Although we're here now, 
under this occasion, he still got her to text. I told her that. She said, Mom, I don't think I want to go. I said, no, you're going to Texas. If I got to drive you there, and I did, 12 hours from Georgia, you better get to be in Texas because he said he wanted you to come, glory to God. So I'm grateful for that. But nevertheless, I do know one thing about Apostle Turner. Hallelujah. He will give you the straight truth. Because I will deal with some situations up in Cartersville, Georgia, which is three hours from Augusta. And I will call him and ask him, well, sometimes you just have to love the hell out of those Negroes. <laughs> Let me tell you, just like it is. So I learned to do that. So my daughter will hear me preach sometime, and I'll be telling the people that. He be, I know she'll be wondering where she... Where do you get that from, Mama? That's who told me. So he would normally tell you, you just have to do that. And I just thank God for him. So I just couldn't sit there, Bishop, glory be to God. I chose to sit down with my daughter to support her. But as a minister of the gospel, I can say that he is a powerful man of God. Amen. So what you see here, even in her and all the family, it just showed the seed, hallelujah, that had been watered. And God gave the increase. Amen. Amen. Amen.
to the family. He had lady to, to, to the family. He wasn't an ordinary man because he did not serve an ordinary God. Mm. He surely did shock all of us. I stand to say so much because he was so precious to us. James asked the question, what is life? The answer come back, you just away from Then Dr. Benjamin May said, it's just a minute in time. So to the family, I pray that the Spirit of the Lord in this morning dew drops will saturate you with his love and grace and mercy and comfort in this time continuously. So we honor God. In the midst of it all, we honor him. Who honored the apostle Fred Turner. In his minute, in his moment, life was perfect, driven. It was so purpose driven to impact all of us. That's why all of us are here. He touched the bottom beside the road of life. And he surely touched my life. Many hungry souls he fed the word. He helped the blind to see and the lame to walk. And knowing life. He helped those to drink water from the well of life. Others he touched, helped to touch the hem of our Lord Jesus Christ. And four years ago, he initiated, he was a prayer warrior, he initiated a prayer, morning glory, with us for four years. He impacted imparted divine revelation, shared revelation, and he was so determined. He was a man with passion for God, to pursue God. For the whole last year, he studied the New Testament. And he was a man of God that imparted so much revelation, so much information. He surely was sharp, and he sharpened us. Loved to hear him speak. Then when he opened his mouth, he had something to say. Many people open their mouth and they don't have a lot to say. Yeah. But he was impact all of us. Yeah. And though he's not here, my brother, maybe you're not, you're not here physically no longer here, but your life, yeah. the legacy, yeah. will continue to live in, on, Amen. in all of us. Amen. So we say for the prayer team, Pastor Hall, Pastor Reynolds, Overseer Williams, Minister Debbie, Apostle Deborah Bailey, and myself. We say to the teacher, the preacher, and the preacher who used his minute wisely. Yeah. He didn't abuse it, he didn't misuse it. In that tiny minute, he put eternity in it that lasts for a lifetime. So I say, as I take my seat, Good night, prayer warrior. We will see you in the morning. But remember, as I always say, when I come to this point, just remember, my brother, you can't crown him to we can take May God bless you. giving honor to this wonderful house. I'm gonna be very short, cause my brother would love that. Yeah. He said, I want you to know that he said that Houston was heaven. Right. He said, if you ain't, I'm gonna say just what he said, if you ain't never been to Houston, you ain't never been to heaven. Well, I'm finally here 
so I've been to heaven. <laughs> he, someone asked him one day, he said, they said to him, how do you study to preach? He said, I don't study to preach. He said, I live to preach. And I study how to live. He said, now all, he said, all them preachers that's um, studying to preach, he said, they ain't preaching. He said, you got to live first. You got to live. And he said, then you can preach what you live. He said, if they're not living, they ain't preaching. Now, I know that's not good English, but it's powerful. It's powerful. And, he, and we know we used to get them, we call them the apostle of giving. He could take up an offering because he would prick the hearts of the people. He would tell us something profound and you know it was he would slap you. And as a result of being slapped, your heart was pricked and you gave. You know, he, he told us, he said that uh -uh, Megan Markle just stepped in to wealth, not riches but stepped into to wealth. And he said, what's wrong with the church is that we don't marry wealth. We don't marry wealth. And because we don't marry wealth, we don't give like we wealthy. Right. Right. He said, when we step into wealth, we'll start giving like we're wealthy. When she married, the first thing after her honeymoon, she started going to see about the poor. The church had married into wealth. And so they don't give like they're wealthy. They don't go to see by the poor. They waiting on them people to come to them. That's the kind of stuff he said that you had to think about what he said. And so I'm going to tell you what he said. Give your life like you're wealthy. Thank you. Praise the Lord. How about our God is a good God? He's an awesome God. He's a mighty God. Amen. I thank God today for just this opportunity to say just a little bit about Apostle Fred and Gigi. Both of them have been special in my life. I thank God for when I met him for the first time. And I, I met him through Pastor Jones, I believe it was. I, I met Pastor Jones through him, one or the other. But he was a very giving man. It's nothing that if I needed it, Pastor Fred would do. And he was a man that, I'm going to tell you, he knew everybody. He knew everybody. Amen. I just believe that he knew everybody. If there was anything that you needed, he knew where to send you to. He knew that he, he said, Pastor Wright, go over there to him. He just tell you where to go. Amen. And so, his life was a life of, he was such an example. And I always think about the revelatory revelation that he had, that he would just drop something. You, he would begin to preach, but he would drop something. Like, and you would just have to catch it. Yeah. Amen? You have to catch it. Not only that, he was a gatherer. He knew how to gather people. Amen? He just knew how to gather people. And I just thank God for his life because not only was he a friend to me, but he was really an advisor, and he was like a father. And so I do give honor to him and to his family today. Yeah. And I know that. I miss him already. Yeah. And I had to come. Yeah. I just had to come. Yeah. I had to come because I had to see his face. Yeah. And you know, the day, of, the day of his death, I called him that day. Because Apostle Turner always opened doors for people that were from other nations. And I would always bring in Apostle Hannah from Ghana, Africa. So I was letting him know that the dates that I gave was wrong. So I was apologizing to him. He said, Apostle Wright, we all right. You know, we all right. He said, just give, call me. He said, just give me the dates and I'll get back with you. I gave him the dates, but he didn't get back with me. That was the same day that he passed. But I'm so thankful 
that I heard his voice that one last time. Amen. To Gigi and to the family. Amen. I, I tell you, my heart is just, it goes out. I know that we, we all can say a whole lot of things, but you are sitting in those shoes. And we love you. We just love you. We're going to continue to pray for you. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to be real brief, amen. I just wanted to say to uh, uh, Pastor G, amen, we love you. Amen. We bring you greetings from, from Augusta, Georgia. And Apostle Turner was a spiritual father to me. And I just thank God for what he was in my life. I can remember when I stepped out of ministry, God gave me the release to leave from my home church, but he didn't give me the release to start the church. So I told my wife, I said, baby, I said, we can't just be out here in limbo. God has released us. But I would always see my pastor Turner come into the home church. And it was just something about him, you know. And so I, I told I said, let's, let's, let's go to the City of Life and let's, let's go uh, fellowship with, with the City of Life with our pastor Turner. And man, so we went there and we, we went and, and, and our pastor Turner and myself, we joked about it later. I'm a praise and a worship leader. Amen. And that's what I was doing in my home church. Praise God. And so when I walked in, Apostle Turner, he put me on the praise team. He put me over the praise team. And about 30 days later, God gave the release to step out and start the church. So the joke was, I always used to tell him, so you thought you had a praise and worship leader, didn't you? He said, you thought you had a God sent coming up in your house. And we joked about that. And we joked about that. Another thing I just want to share with you, then I'm going to have my seat. You know, I was talking to one of the other uh, pastors that came from Augusta. And I thought, I, you know, I thought I was special because when we stepped out, <coughs> Apostle Turner, he, he sold our first sound system. It was a little three or four mic system with two speakers. And, 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 and about three microphones, but we played that thing till we blew it out. <laughs> but it was, the, it was just the little things that he did. Did my home church sort that into me? No. But this man of God took me in as if I was one of his. I can remember when we, we would have Bible study and like you said, brother, in that, in that storefront, front, storefront church, and we only had a few people that was there. And he would gather up some of his members from his church and bring them to my Bible study just to encourage me to keep going on. This is the kind of man, man of God that he was. And I just want to just, just, just say thank God. I want to thank God for what he did through this man of God, the life that he impacted through this man of God. Amen. Amen. And he was he was that forerunner. Amen. That God used in Texas, in Houston, in Augusta. Everywhere he went, everything he put his hand on. Amen. God prospered it. Amen. And I thank God for him. We love you, uh, uh, Pastor G. Nina, Josh. I'm, I'm just, just meeting the other son. Amen. We, we love you and we pray God's speed and covering over your life. Amen. Amen. All right. Can you say amen? amen? Come on, can you say amen? amen? We have heard from such incredible people that has been impacted by the life of Apostle Turner. I, I, I don't want to be before you long, but I do feel that I need to share this word with you today. I've had some good days. There's been some hills to climb. Anybody ever been there? I've had some weary 
that serveth God and him that serveth him not. My thought will come from that 16th verse. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that brought that thought upon his name. I'm going to preach to you here today from this thought. The book of remembrance. Say it with me. The book of remembrance. Father, your word is already blessed, is already anointed. Give us now ears that we hear. But the Spirit of the Lord would say on this occasion. Father, we thank you for the life, the legacy. We thank you for the lives that were impacted by this man's ministry. Now I pray, God, that the word will go forth, that will convict, that will convince, that will bring people to know you in a real and special way. In the name of Jesus. And the people of God all over shouted, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. The book of remembrance. I believe one of the greatest things that God has ever given to the human race is to have the ability to remember. The memories are precious. When you think about it, life comes and goes, but memories never die. <laughs> they live on in the minds and in the hearts of those who have created them. Amen. It is precious memories, if you will. <laughs> Last week has been a very challenging week for a lot of us. Amen. I was in St. Louis, Missouri, the middle of a presentation when Brother Gerald Holmes called me. And to say the least, he asked me a question, are you sitting down? I said, no, I'm standing up giving the presentation. And then he told me the situation. You have to know that it had an immediate impact on me just like it did so many. But you see, I began to reflect back from the first time I met him. Several has alluded to that. Of course, I guess I can tell my story better than they can. <laughs> Fred called me and says, I know where your church is and you probably need an alarm system. <laughs> I say, you're probably right. <laughs> so he came by and he gave me his presentation and I listened very attentively. Of course, I listened with the plan. And uh, certainly I had the ability to write the check right then and there. But I told him, I said, well, I kind of want my brethren to see what you're presenting, so I want you to come back Sunday morning, and I want you to get there in time for service so they can at least see you in church. That, that, that may help you out there. That may help you get this sale. And so we... We had a service, and it was a powerful service, and I could see on his face that there was some impact. True enough, at the end of the service, we wrote the check, and uh, he received the check, he installed the alarm, and that next week I was away preaching out of state. 
And I get a call about the time church is out. When I travel, I still want to hear what went on. And uh, Pastor Dennis Williams called me. And he said, you know that salesman, that alarm salesman? I said, yeah. He said, he got the Holy Ghost today. I said, he did. He said, not only that, but we're going to baptize him. And that's where it all started. Amen. Our history began at that moment. Not his history. Our history began at that moment. And I got to tell you today because it affected me so to the point where I couldn't hardly function. Because it's a GG and I had my wife on the phone and I, I, could, I couldn't even speak. I started trying to pray and tears started to fall and uh, I had to ask my wife, you, you're going to have to finish this prayer, I can't, I can't, I can't say nothing else, I'm, I'm too full because of the memories, because of the time we had to spend together. I told somebody earlier, Everybody that has ever handled my sound booth, which, which Fred was one of them, started preaching. And I told him Sunday, I said, maybe that's why I don't have nobody over here today. <laughs> Now all of y'all are running from the call of God on your life. But I got to tell you, I remember, I remember so much that it gave me some consolation of understanding the impact that he had and the memories he left. I remember when he first started preaching. Now, apparently, he started preaching bootlegging <laughs> in the garage. <laughs> but, but, but I'm talking about when he officially accepted his calling, I was there. I remember when he met his bride in Gaithersburg, Maryland. We were there for an evangelistic conference. And I got I got to say this here because I, I, I he would say it, he would say it. He was looking for a wife. And uh, he brings several girls to me. I said, oh, that ain't the one. <laughs> If y'all know Fred, Fred was hard-headed. I tell Fred, leave that girl alone. All right, all right, all right Pastor. And I catch him over on 16. I'd be pulling in a parking lot, and he'd be pulling out with the girl on the next side of him. And he'd look at me and just drop his head, and I'd say, I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you. But when we got to Maryland, I don't even know how they got together. But somehow, God, there was thousands of people there. But somehow, God put them together. And when he brought her to me, I said, oh yeah, friend. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's the one right there. That's the one right there. I, was, I, I remember when his children were born. I remember, I remember how vibrant they were. And I remember how he dealt with young people. 
He, he was just a real guy. Some of us was religious. But he was real. I remember, I remember many times he would say things that we would cringe about. <laughs> cringe about <laughs> but that was free and that's what you had to counter towards oh but well, that's just free that's free I remember when he went to Augusta and we used to have a poster board in our church and we called it the city of life and it, it had grocery stores and medical facilities and, and nursing homes and we called it the city of life. He went to Georgia and the ministry he started was the city of life. Yes, my friends, it was precious memories. Psalm says precious memories, how? How they linger. How they ever flood my soul. In the stillness of the midnight, precious sacred scenes unfold. I'm sure, I'm sure many of us today have similar experiences as far as memories are concerned about Brother Turner. But in the text today, I found out that we're not the only one that's remembering. In the text today, the Bible says for those that fear God, the Bible says that He He eavesdrops on us. He listens to our conversations. He 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 heard them while they spake. Bible says that uh, that He would write it in. A book of remembrance. I promise you, give me five minutes, I'm going to go home. Is that all right? He would write it in a book of remembrance. In other words, every time you came together and praised God, he writes it in the book. I wonder if anybody want an entry made right now. Why don't you just lift your hands and drop right where you are and just say, God, I thank you for another day. You just got put in the book. Somebody shout glory to God. But not, 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 not only that, not only that, he, he listens when we come together. I heard him talk about morning glory. When they came together in prayer, yeah. he's listening. Yes. And he's, the Amplified says, he is taking minutes yes, on what's being said. Yes, <laughs> How about that? Yes, he's taking minutes on what's being said. But not only, not only does he listen to us when we come together, but then he responds to our needs. When I heard this the other day, I didn't know how I was going to make it. But immediately the memories helped me get through my situation. Look at somebody and say, he helped me because he responded to my needs. He knew I needed something at that moment. He knew that if I didn't get something right then and there,
I'm going to make you like a jewel. Somebody say a jewel is precious. He says, I'm going to take care of it. When it seems like you can't make it another further, he says, I'm going to step in right in the nick of time. And before you know it, everything is going to be all right. Somebody lift your hand if you know that God's going to make everything all right. And so, and so, and so, not only did he respond to our needs, but then the Bible says he rewards us for serving him. The Bible said a day going to come when he's going to look at those that served him and those that served him not. Look at your neighbor and say, this is a great day to serve the Lord. The Bible said we ought to serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that he is God, for it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people. We're the sheep of his pasture. So when I came in here today, I entered into his gates with thanksgiving. Fred's not here no more, but I still got to thank God for it. May have to cry tonight, but today I got to thank God for it. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, there ain't no telling where I'd be today. Lift your hands and shout glory to God. Come on and shout glory to God. Oh, I'm, I'm almost done. Songwriter wrote and said, When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my light, whatever my light, thou hast taught me to say, it is well. I wish I had somebody that would open up your mouth, that even in the situation we in, Open your mouth and shout, it is well. It don't look good, it don't feel good, but my confession is, it is well. It is well, it is well with my soul. Where 
where seemingly sorrow exists. Thank God that his name is written in the land of the Look at the name and say, he made it! Question now is not whether he made it. The question now, will you be ready? If I love him, you want to see him again, you got to be ready. Yeah. 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 The songwriter says, soon. Yeah. And there is yeah. soon. We're going to see the king. No more dying. All right. No more crying, no more sickness, no more death. When we see Jesus, look at somebody and say, I'm going to be able to say amen. amen. All the troubles, all the heartaches will be over when I see Jesus. Be encouraged, family. Be encouraged, those of us that love him. Know that he is all right. Now I turn to live in order to be all right when Jesus comes. Come, sir. Thank you. 